Uh oh, we have problems, and I think we got big problems. I think I sheared something on the back of the rotor. Probably what has happened is when the boat comes through, the gear will slide itself off of that shaft. Well, if you don't mind, go go ahead and call whoever you got to to where I can get you out here as, 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 as soon as possible. Be nice they put a little step ladder back here for us old folks. That's the back of what drives the rotor. Something is stripped out or broke. I'm not sure what though. It's just pretty aggravating and frustrating that all of this happened because of a $3 bolt breaking. All of this because of one $3 bolt. All right, new development. Mechanic just stopped and looked at my combine. Uh, I was out in the field helping Kelly with the planter, so I wasn't here, but he called me and on the phone and said, I think the gear on the back of the rotor is stripped out. So that means the feeder house and the rotor has got to come out. And he said, if you can get it down to our shop in Brownsville, which we can probably get it done a lot quicker because it requires uh, some uh, special extensions on a forklift and other tools because this isn't necessarily the easiest job so i said i'll get it down there so normally brownsville i don't know how many miles away it is brownsville is about a 30 minute drive by truck we're definitely looking at over an hour drive on the combine but we're gonna head out and get down there just as quick as we possibly can maybe just maybe with any luck if they have the parts that we need there's a chance we can get this thing wrapped up today <laughs> but i'm going to stick down there around and watch them do it and i've never seen the rotor of one of these combines come out i need to learn just in case i ever have to do it Finally made it to Brownsville. Got about another 10 minutes to get to the dealership. So back, but you want me to back it in the back door?
or lower. inside of the rotor cage looks like. Well, it was free. I thought it was jammed up in there. And this gear fits on the drive shaft coming out of the gearbox and got a big bolt and washer holding it on and apparently the bolt either broke or worked its way loose letting this slide forward off the shaft until it boogered up the splines there I also got this thing hot and chipped off part of the teeth all this is is a big paperweight now well this is where we're at end of the day today Kelly had to run to Union City to get most of the parts we need, but there's a seal, the seal that goes on the rudder gearbox that's having to come out of Atlanta and it's being overnighted here. So it should be here first thing this morning. So we're doing everything we can do today until we get that seal in. But our seal gets here first thing in the morning. This thing should be back together in a few hours. And maybe by any luck, maybe we'll be cutting some wheat by lunchtime or, or, a, li or, or, a, or a little while after that. <laughs> I'm hoping anyway because I think they got some good chances of rain for several days next week and it's definitely not what that wheat crop, wheat crop needs right now but all we do is get done what we can get done as soon as this thing is fixed and back together we're going to be hard at it it's just pretty aggravating and frustrating that all of this happened because of a $3 bolt breaking. All of this because of one $3 bolt. But that's the name of the game in farming. 
So many different frustrations, it's all about how you deal with them and manage them. But anyway, we're about to, I'm about to head on back to the house. Uh, we'll be back at it first thing in the morning. Well, we head back down to Brownsville, hoping that uh, the seal will come in this morning. I texted the mechanic and said they hadn't checked parts in yet, but we head down in there anyway try and spur things along a little bit so we can get back to cutting wheat. Let's keep our fingers crossed that everything showed up on the Saturday like it was supposed to. Well, guess what? The seal did not show up from Atlanta this morning. Drove all the way down here and got about five minutes away. They called me and said that the seal never got put on the truck in Atlanta to get up here this morning. Then I debated just put it all back together if the seal wasn't going to be hardly be leaking, just put it all back together to get me through the weekend. Anyway, we fired it up without the rotor in, and within like three minutes, you can see it seeping around the edges, and the oil wasn't even hot and didn't even have a load on it. So, you know what happened when we put the rotor in and put a load on it, it just get real bad. If I ran it dry of oil accidentally, Gearbox is uh, $6,400, so don't want to risk that. So then I just thought to ask him, is there a seal at any other dealership anywhere around? Oh, there's one in Carruthersville, which is like an hour away from my house, about an hour and a half from Brownsville. So that's what we're doing right now. We're driving to Carruthersville to go get a seal, because otherwise it'd be Monday morning, and it's supposed to be raining on Monday for myself to get here. As they told me this yesterday, we'd had the park waiting there on them first thing this morning. So we got an hour and a half drive and we're in the service truck, which is not a speed demon. And it might take two, two, it might take two tanks of gas to get up there and back. Busted our butt to get up in Carrizal and back to Brownsville, two minutes away from the parts store. And we get caught by a train. And this is the main exchange for four counties. Yeah, this is going to be a pretty long one. And we got up there and back before lunch. Yeah, too bad there's not like a McDonald's right there. We could eat lunch. Hello? Well, that was a wasted trip to Missouri. Well, there won't be no wheat cut today. Or tomorrow. Or Monday. Whatever. Got the, I got, got the seal out of the gearbox and something happened up in the gearbox enough to shove, shove the input or the output shaft forward hard enough to break a thrust washer on it. What the hell? So there's, there's something wrong with the gearbox. Don't exactly know what, but there's a, there's a gearbox sitting in Russellville, Kentucky, waiting on the loading dock for me to go pick it up. Where the Russellville, Kentucky. Like uh, an hour northeast of Clarksville, about about three hours or so, or longer. I don't know. And when you plan on doing that? As soon as I get home, I reckon. Do you want me to go with you? If you want to. I mean, the gearbox weighs probably what four or five hundred pounds, don't it? Said at least three fifty. The mechanic said at least three fifty. I mean, things happen. You know, you didn't. I figured that it wasn't that easy of a fix. It's never simple with us. No, but I mean, is it a common problem for the gearbox to totally just car you know, crap out? I mean, stuff like that happens. It's not a, a common problem like that bolt coming out on the back of the rotor. It's not common, but I mean, uncommon stuff still happens. I mean, the machine's got, you know, 3,500 hours on it. I mean... <laughs> Stuff wears, stuff gets old, stuff breaks. Well, no, actually, that bolt coming out is common. Yeah, but that, yeah, but yeah, but whatever happened up in the gearbox is what caused that bolt to break. That's what that's what happened. So, anyway, that's what we're going to do. So you're grabbing something to eat right now? Yeah. Alrighty. All right, bye. Bye. Can you say there's a backyard barbecue around here? Which way? back to uh well guys there you go you got the story now it's never easy or simple with us but on the plus side i've got no choice but to take father's day off 
Sure, Zach, don't mind that. We're gonna get restocked on our underwear and socks tomorrow. Hey, finally made it. Me and my faithful co-pilot. All right, they said it'd be around on the loading dock somewhere. I hope that's not it sitting in that crate right there. I ain't gonna be able to lift that dang thing up. Yeah, it is. Oh, gee. We're gonna bunk up and do it ourselves as well. Hope you can pick up about 150 um, pounds. Can you let me out, please? Yeah, when I back up to it. I was gonna look. No, a loading dock is something you back up to and it's level with the bed of your truck. Three man gear, but he told me $5,500. This is $37.39 on here. You said you wanted a brand new one, not a reman. Well, I ain't got any choice. Hey, let me open the box, make sure it's actually the gearbox I want, not somebody else's. But it says from Brownsville, so it's got to be ours, but I don't see her name on it. It's not going to have her name on it. Are you kidding me? That's going to take both of us to look that up. Well, that's it. It's going to take both of us to lift it. I mean, you're going to be easy. I mean, all you've got to do is grab a shaft. Take it out of the bag. I'm just seeing if I can actually pick it up. <clears throat> Let's just test it, see, see what you can pick up. I can't pick up this wood thing. I'm going to tell you that right now. What's wrong with wood? Nope. Let's do the wood. I have to do that. Oh, why don't you just grab the shaft there? No, because this has got freaking. Hold on. It's got handles. Okay. One, two, three. But I can't get my foot over it. That's my problem. So we need to get this closer. I think I can do. But if I could get my leg up over. I mean, once we go, we can't stop till we get it up there. If you think you can't do it, we'll do something else. Bored, man. I mean, I think if we give it one clean jerk, we can just get it and throw it in there. It ain't like we're going to damage it. <laughs> I mean, we won't have to move. Just a clean jerk and throw. Hold on. Just hold on. Do you want to move your hand closer? Just move it just a little bit, just a little bit. All right. I lift my leg, not my freaking arms. Oh. One, two. I had it, but I got handles on my side. That's the problem. Yeah, and I got more steel on this side. I didn't know anybody was here. Well, I'm not. I'm back up here for somebody else, and I heard somebody out here. Hell yeah. We were yeah. seriously over here struggle busting it like, uh, we got this. When I set this thing out here, and they said somebody's coming after, and I was like, 
Well, they told me it's gonna be on loading dock. I thought we just gonna back, back up to up. it and scoot it over. It's not there. a loading dock. This no, is man. the ground. I'm sorry. No, they didn't say nothing about that. But uh, you have to look. Watch your kidneys there. Hold on, you... Matt. We need to move this up over. Uh, it's no, hot. it's really wobbly. Yeah. Let's pick, pick up on your oh, shit. That's my finger. I didn't do anything. Let down. We're sliding back in the center of that pallet. <laughs> oh, shit. Sorry, kid. Oh. Now let's sit there until we get her up. There it is. Luckily that guy showed up because I was about out of options on getting this thing in the truck. It's been a long day so far. Three more hours to go before we get home. Well, the saga of the broke combine of 2021 should end today. Got the gearbox there in the back. Should be the last piece of the puzzle that they need to get the thing back running again. So yet again, another 30 minute drive down to Brownsville, hopefully for the last time. And if I even look, I don't, five, six hours, we'll be bringing the thing back up this way uh, about the time that the rain hits. We got a 80% chance of rain after noon, one o'clock today. Supposed to get up around possibly a half inch or so. Rain wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Kind of wish it'd come a few days ago though when we were driving broke, to Kentucky and back. Broke yeah. down though. I was wrong. The saga continues. This is not the right gearbox. We drove six hours round trip. No, it's the right gearbox, but he's saying that it's... We don't, we, don't, we don't know what it is. It's definitely a rotor gearbox, but most likely it's for a newer model because <laughs> we didn't notice this when we picked it up. I didn't even think to look. I, the shaft you. is bigger. Let me show you. The oh. hole where the bolt goes in. So now bigger. this does not fit. This is the gear that's supposed to go on the gearbox. It, it no fit. Yeah, so now he's gonna try and see if that this there's a part so, for that for upgrade. So now the parts that we drive <laughs> drive and get no longer work. Well I guess I'm gonna be driving again, aren't I? So it's now if this is gonna work, if this is in fact an upgraded part that will work on my combine, we yeah, now have to stuff. try and find the other parts that we already had <laughs> again, but for this gearbox. Kelly's gonna have to go all the way to probably Timbuktu and back now. We don't even know if they're anywhere. There's going to be. It has we to don't be. know if they're anywhere around. Do we have they're a, chicken. I need a rosary. We need a priest. I'm done. <laughs> and I guess it's a good thing that I'm not like in a hurry or anything. Yeah. Calm down. Because... It'd be worse if you, you know we actually had like a crop to harvest and rain was coming and stuff. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad none of that. Is do you want me just to go like steal the combine like I did before? Right now, I didn't even take that old 2388. Hello. All right, finally a little bit of good use. Yes, uh, this gearbox will work. Yes, it does require some different parts. The gear that we got won't work because this one has taper splines on it, whereas the old gearbox had a snap ring and just had straight splines. Also gonna take a bigger bolt and bigger washer. Luckily, they had all three of those parts well, they had two of the parts in Union City and one in New Bern, but the truck was about to make its daily run. It's up there in Union City now, so parts we need should be here around noon or so. so we still got to get the gearbox out of the combine. We still got to put this one in it. And then hopefully by that time, uh, parts will be, the parts we need will be getting close and we'll be able to get this buttoned up. Hopefully with no more drama. Says max load 6,000 pounds. That's about what that thing felt like when we tried to pick it up the other day. <laughs>
I got one of these fans here in the shop I'm almost right above the combine. I gotta see if I can fit one of these in my shop, and they are awesome. They move a lot of air. Well, you just go ahead and set it down on that frame rail, see if you can straighten it back out for me. Uh, yeah. This is the combine that jumped the cornhead. Yeah. Hey, Jacob asked me for the serial number off the front windshield a few days ago. I'm like, that ain't the same windshield that come in it. I forgot about that. Of course, truck finally showed up so we can get all this stuff put together and put in. Yeah, it looked like some nasty weather coming in from the north. Good chance I'll be driving this thing home in some nice little thunderstorms. It looks like the gust front has arrived. That's what all came out of the road or we might have all this stuff blowing around here. Ooh. Here's a moment of truth. Got everything put back together. Let's see if it'll work now. Oh, and also we got more problems. Zach is stuck on the side of 412 with a blown airbag on the truck. Kelly's uh, gone over there with some vice grips to try and so we can pinch off the air hose so he can at least get, get the truck moved. He's been hauling wheat all day up to Dyersburg uh, just to go ahead and get started on the wheat hauling. So we got that to fix if I can track down an airbag. And it's turning. Woo. Back away before I get all itchy. Jacob, the mechanic, gave me the green light, said everything felt good to him, no strange noises, everything doing what it's supposed to do, so I get ready for the hour and 15 minutes, hour and a half, miserable drive home down Highway 79. Safe and sound. Tell you what, after that drive, I need a Xanax or a cold beer or both. I don't know how these big farmers 
drive miles and miles from farm to farm. I can't, I can't do it. It sucks with this big equipment we got nowadays. But anyway, we're gonna get this thing uh, filled up, the grease ready to go, uh, get this airbag changed on the truck. Looks like Zach's already gotten started on it. And I don't know if we'll actually make it to the field or not today to get any weed cut, but we're sure gonna try. If we don't make it today, we'll definitely make it tomorrow. Right, how are you coming along here? Well, she did blow out, didn't she? She's ready to haul some more grain. We got two new airbags. This snow here is looking pretty bad too, so we change this. Bring it up, we're ready to go again. Here's the old airbag. I'd say we probably got her life out if she had a slight malfunction right there. All right, we got the combine filling up with fuel. I got a part on the grain bin uh, diagnosed while one of the fans wasn't coming on. Looks like we got a bone transformer, so I got that off. Get another one first thing tomorrow morning. And Zach and Kelly are down here loading up a truck full of wheat because, believe it or not, we missed the rain, but pretty much every place north of us got a pretty good rain. So there shouldn't be a long line of trucks up at the granaries. Actually, just be able to go up there, dump, and be back here, hopefully by the time we start. That's the plan anyway. So anyway, we still got... A little bit of daylight left, 45 minutes or so, so we're gonna finish filling up the fuel, run up the road, hook up to our header, and see if we can cut a combine full load of wheat just to make sure everything's gonna work and hopefully be ready for a good hard day tomorrow getting some wheat out. Let's give this a try. Well, the rudder's definitely turning. I can hear bogging the engine down, taking in that down bit of wheat. Well, I hadn't lost any yield in a few days. Right there at 100 bushels an acre on some late planted wheat. That's good. I got a little deer, a little baby deer right over there, fawn. See it? See it? Oh, it's gonna get cut, hung in the fence. I ain't anybody thirsty. Hopefully it don't run too far, Mama ain't gonna be able to find it. I'd say she's fixed and ready for a good hard day tomorrow. Well, it only took us four days to get the combine fixed. Three days longer than what I was thinking it was gonna take. And definitely took a few thousand more dollars than what I thought it was gonna take, but we got it back. We're approximately half done with our wheat crop, so Still got a lot of bushels put through this machine. And we looked out and missed the rain uh, today, but I think they got rain forecast to come back in towards the very end of the week. So keep our fingers crossed. We can pound some bushels through this thing, get our wheat crop out for the next chance of rain, get all our double crop soybeans planted, everything sprayed. All right, Rick, I'm gonna call this a video. I'm gonna head on home, get some supper in me, get ready for the next few days because they're gonna be hard. Appreciate y'all watching. Come on back in a few days and see how our wheat harvest uh, continues.